Hiya, I'm Bruce Fumi. It's the 30th of March and I'm sitting on the city walls of Berwick-upon-Tweed. And welcome to today's episode of This Day in Scottish History. Uh, now, in the era that I'm going to talk about today, the town's defences were less substantial than they were in later years. There was a ditch, a rampart and a timber barricade. But that was enough. Or was it? See, what was thrown at this town on this day in 1296 was much more than the people of Berwick could have anticipated. Now, Berwick is a Scottish town, but it's in England. It's north of the Tweed, but technically English. Yet the football team, Berwick Rangers, play in the Scottish Football League. The town swapped hands many times, and on this day, it was under Edward I of England. Now, if ever there was a pantomime villain of Scottish history, it's Edward I of England. And in 1296, he crossed the border at Coldstream with a large army and headed east and camped over in that side of the town. And he also brought a navy which lay out in the Tweed estuary. He wasn't here to fanny about. He offered the town's terms of surrender and then waited. And as he waited, he decided to knight some of his followers. Now that often happened in uh, you know, situations such as this. And as the host lined up with their banners waving for the ceremony, the naval force out in the estuary there thought that this was a sign to attack. And the ships headed towards Berwick, but some of them foundered, and the people of Berwick set fire to the ships that had run aground. They clearly had some reinforcements, reinforcements from Glasgow Neds, eh? Uh, now, when Edward saw that the ships were burning, he sent in his troops. Now, they didn't try and assault these walls. They got in under false pretenses. They walked up, knocked on the door, and said, if you were going to replace your doors and windows, how many would you replace? It was nearly like that, anyway. Basically, they approached the gate and they were flying flags and ensigns of the Scottish King and persuaded the gatekeepers that they were reinforcements from John Balliol, King of Scots. And the doorman let them in. Uh, it's the Cambridge Analytica approach to campaigning. Shut it. Don't blame me if you don't watch the news. The English troops ran amok. Now, as always, there are varying figures given to the number that were killed in the slaughter that day. Wikipedia gives the figure of 30,000 civilians. But even if you take the more conservative and possibly more realistic figure of 7,500 uh, given by uh, John of Forden, who was a historian at the time, 7,500 in a town like berwick upon tweed whose population today is only 12,000. To give you perspective on what it takes to murder 7,500 people, if you went to the local stadium while Berwick Rangers were playing and killed every player, official and spectator, you'd still have to find another 7,000 people to kill. Now, Berwick Rangers weren't playing on that day, but the point is that we talk about the massacre of Glencoe and the Battle of Culloden, but these, like the massacre of Sebrenes, are pale into insignificance compared to this butchery. It's said that the blood ran in the streets so deep that it could turn a water wheel. The scale and inhumanity of this barbarism worked, because within nine weeks everywhere else in Scotland capitulated to the English king rather than face the same fate. So why did it happen? Well, John Balliol was king of Scots, but Edward I of England felt that Balliol owed allegiance to him. The thing is that we live in a world where people are governed by the, and, and they're loyal to the nation state, aren't they? Uh, but medieval British Isles were feudal. The feudal system was like a human pyramid, and at the top is the king, and he conquers lands, aye, with the blood of his subjects. He then provides lands to a number of lords who have sworn an oath of allegiance to him, the king. Now below those lords are knights who owe allegiance to their noble lords, and below them are squires, below them are serfs, and below them... Have you ever seen the Jeremy Kyle show? If you're American, Jerry Springer, right? It, is it just me? Or if you picked up the mail one morning to find an invitation to be a guest on the Jeremy Kyle show, 
and you start asking your partner a few searching questions. The point is that there was a hierarchical structure to society and land ownership. And it was based on oaths of allegiance that superseded the idea of the nation state. The guy at the top could order you to go out and fight so that he could get more land. And you had to do it. You were fighting not for your country, you were fighting for the guy above you in the pyramid to whom you had sworn an oath. And you had to take the people below you who had sworn an oath to you. John Balliol, the King of Scots, had sworn an oath to Edward I. Now why would he do that? That's for tomorrow's episode. The point is that Edward expected John, the King of Scots, to fight when he was told to, to follow orders when he was told to, and to submit to Edward the Englishman's decisions whenever he was told to do so. Now this was the Scottish King, and the Scots nobles saw this as a humiliation. And they decided that they weren't going to take this humiliation anymore. The reason that Edward besieged Berwick and massacred its people was just because the nobility of Scotland signed a treaty with Edward's enemies, the English. Sorry, the French. Uh, I, they, they might have attacked Carlisle as well, right, okay, but let's not make a mountain out of a whole hill. That treaty with France meant that technically, Scottish people were automatically French citizens right up until 1903. So if your great granny's still alive, you might be able to avoid the worst of Brexit. I've got an easy question for you today. What do we call the treaty uh, that was established with the French? Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something. If you have, please like and share the clip. The more you like and share the clip, uh, the more people get to find out about this story because of uh, Facebook's algorithms or whatever the hell he is, right, okay? I mean, let's face it, if you can, can benefit from it, I might as well benefit from it. So like and share the Facebook page, Scotland History Tours, like and share the clip, and please uh, go on to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Scotland History Tours. I mean, Doc is going to be Lama Live. Cheerio and Rasta.